I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook, and today I want to talk about tool deflection and how it can impact your tool life. What is tool deflection exactly? Picture your cutting tool being hit repeatedly from the side by a jackhammer, just like that one. Suppose you've got a three flute cutter running through a cut in aluminum at 10,000 RPM. That means the jackhammer is pounding your cutter 30,000 times a minute. Whoa! Cutters have to hold up to some pretty harsh conditions, don't they? Do you think you could tap the side of any decent sized carbide end mill hard enough and often enough to break it though with just your finger? Probably not. Yet, you can break steel with your fingers. It just takes the right conditions. We're all familiar with the idea that bending a paper clip back and forth enough times will eventually break that paper clip. The metal gets fatigued and abruptly snaps when it's had enough. The same thing can happen to your cutters. Bend them back and forth enough, hey, remember, 30,000 times a minute, and they will fatigue and then break as well. But how much is too much? How much tool deflection can they take? You can look at it from several different per perspectives. First, it's going to impact the accuracy of your cut if the cutter is deflecting. It'll also be a factor in your surface finish. But we can clean all that up with a finish pass. That's not so bad. The second thing, though, is tool deflection can be the starting point for chatter. Imagine that hammer hitting the side of a tuning fork instead of an end mill. If it hits it at exactly the frequency of that tuning fork, well, you've got the picture, and we all know chatter is very bad for tool life. Here's the third component, though. You need to be thinking of tool deflection as being basically the same as run out. When a tool deflects, it doesn't run true to the spindle's axis, just like with run out. Picture there on the left. Now, the true chip load of a cut is going to be the sum of the calculated chip load plus the runout, plus any deflection. This graph on the right shows the effect of runout. It's not a pretty sight. Take that sum of deflection and runout, and as we can see, when it reaches 50% of your chip load, your tool life falls to only 60% of what it should be. That's a pretty big loss of tool life to have to deal with. How do you reduce deflection? How do you get it under control? There are four ways you can combat tool deflection. First, use carbide over high-speed steel. It's three times more rigid. Second, increase your tool diameter. Rigidity goes up as the fourth power of tool diameter. Third, decrease your tool stick out. Rigidity goes up as the third power of tool length. Last, reduce your cutting forces. Now let's try some examples and see how this all works. This is G-Wizard, a feeds and speeds calculator made by my company, CNC Cookbook. Let's suppose you've got a quarter inch end mill and a cut. You're going through aluminum, it's a three flute. You want to do a full slot and you need to go down three quarters of an inch in the slot. You initially decide to try that in one pass. I got that set up here in G-Wizard. Check out the deflection warning there in red-orange. We've got about 1.4 thousandths of an inch deflection. That's over half the recommended maximum chip load of two thousandths of an inch, so it's not good. What if we could try the next larger sized end mill? If we flip over to G-Wizard's rigidity calculator to see how much more rigid a 5 16 inch end mill is than a quarter inch, there it is. Doesn't seem like much of an increase, but as you can see, increasing the diameter by just 25% increase rigidity by almost two and a half times. Wow, that is a big help. Okay, let's go back to feeds and speeds. If I increase the diameter, sure enough, the deflection warning goes away. Okay, 
Now let's suppose I can't increase diameter due to an internal radius. We can still try to reduce the stick out. What if instead of leaving a quarter inch of clearance, we bring that down so there's just a tenth of an inch there. Getting back to the rigidity calculator, we can see the cutting tool length reduction made the tool 1.6 times as rigid. And going back to feeds and speeds, there's enough to fix the problem. Change in diameter or length is the best way to get rid of deflection problems. If you have to reduce cutting forces, you're going to be increasing cycle speed, so it's less desirable, but we can do that either. I mean, let's assume we can't go any larger in diameter and we need a full inch of stick out. In GWizard, we can figure out exactly how much to reduce cutting forces by either reducing cut depth, cut width, slowing down feeds and speeds. GWizard has this feature called the cut optimizer that makes it easy. Let's say we want to reduce cut depth in order to get things under control. Just click the cut depth title. Now we can see the maximum cut depth we can run without having too much deflection. It looks like we're going to need two full passes of 334 thousandths, followed by a finished pass to clean up the rest to do this cut. <laughs> Not too bad. We can't do it in one pass, but we can easily do it in two. Okay, let's recap what we learned. Tool deflection is very bad for your tool life. We know that. You can reduce deflection by using carbide instead of high-speed steel, using larger diameter tools, reducing tool stick out, and if all else fails, you can reduce cutting forces. Just cut your width, your depth, your feed rate, or your spindle RPMs, and the cutting forces will go down. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you again on our next video. Thank you.